Welcome to the RPG Podcast. And we are live. Oh, God, Pat! Presented by Sheep. A Time Wheel Production. Welcome, everyone, to the Robert Patton Global Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. Really appreciate your following us. Please do tell your friends and uh, leave us a five star review because we love those. I don't know if we have any of those, so check them out. I'll read it on air if I see one that I like. Today, I'm here with a reoccurring guest, my brother and uh business partner matt humble what up what up yeah i like to do these like mm-hmm. the recurring ones it's fun and sometimes we have interesting stuff to talk about and we say well hold on let's just have a podcast and talk about it <laughs> absolutely so, yeah you got some kava right there i do have some kava one of our sponsors for uh, ohana kava bar.com i'm gonna do a little tincture here and this is the the way I was introduced to it, actually. And this is probably my preferred method of taking it because it's simple. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, you can also buy the drink, and it's it's quite an experience. I like to say it's kind of you know, it's like a party mm-hmm. um, for people, especially for people that haven't ever tried it. You know, I like to take them to the bar and, and give them a shot and see their reaction. <laughs> I haven't tried the tincture yet. I've only tried the what is the cup called that has a certain name? Not Bula. That's what you say when you cheers. Yeah. Um a cov- so we have the Kraken, and I don't know if you tried the Kraken. I did. Then, that that was like the double. Yeah. Yeah, those are crazy. I'm not Yeah. A, that's for the experienced drinker. I'm <laughs> I, and I'm experienced, but I just I'm more casual. I'm not trying to get like crunk on that shit, you know. Which you can get faded, I guess you might say, or they say rooted <laughs> off of it. I, I just like a tiny little taste, a little. It's not even a buzz, really. Just a little sense of well-being. Just a nice right. little microdose. Microdose. Thank you. Yes, exactly. I like that. Yeah, microdosing is all the rage right now. Um, I'm sure I've talked about it before, but for those that are new to it, the idea is a sub-perceptual dose of a psychedelic um, and or plant medicine. So that means it's not, you know, like say it's LSD or or psilocybin mushrooms, it's not any amount to feel. Right. um, So that you're like, whoa, I feel it. I feel trippy. I feel, you know, like I'm in a, you know, different headspace. It's not really meant to do that. It's mostly to act as a nootropic and to help different parts of your brain communicate with each other just a little better than they do in the, in our normal waking state. And, um, people are developing like life changing, crazy advanced technology by, by microdosing apparently. (laughs) Hmm. I wonder how many of Elon Musk's team are microdosing. Probably all of them. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny, I've talked about that before, but I do feel like Elon must be in touch with the psychedelic experience. And maybe he's just smart enough that it's kind of like he's able to perceive it with his normal his normal brain. But at the same time, I feel like it's such common knowledge these days with all these documentaries on Netflix coming out and even people like... Um, you wouldn't expect talking about them or talking about them. And like, what, what was her name? She did, uh, she has a, a new show on Netflix. And, oh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. That's her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's awesome. I love when her. When she's talking about it, you know what I mean? I, I feel like the titans of the tech industry must know about it as well. So that's a funny thing for sure. I mean... <laughs> I'm into the nootropic aspect, but you know what I'm really into is the adrenochrome. Oh, and okay. I think it's it's a uh, baby's blood. I'm just joking. <laughs> I know. That's, yeah, Alex Jones went off about that. 
I mean, I don't. I honestly don't know what it is, but it's it's supposed to be the fountain of youth in theory, and I don't know what it takes to get it. But oh my god, I I recall his story, which is quite insane. But it's please tell me um, the the story was, you know, all these rich billionaire people, like you know, um, top level Illuminati type people, were using DMT to communicate with extra dimensional aliens and entities to like know what to do next you know to like overtake the human race or something like that and then eventually the dmt stopped working um so they had to to switch to adrenochrome which is harvested from little babies or something Uh, like that so uh, oh my god uh, i don't know apparently they shoot you up with it and you feel amazing or something but who knows if that shit's true it's well, definitely so interesting though it's interesting but so what i'm looking for is the actors or politicians that start reversing their age before your eyes i'm gonna be like they got you know mm-hmm. they have it but when you still see the major richest most powerful people getting old and dying it's like oh they don't have it just yet right or or it hasn't you know reached them through the these these tech companies are the ones throwing all the money at it. I do want to say this though, because I was doing my Wim Hof as I usually do, and I read one of the comments below, and you mentioned that the, this message was sent to them through DMT or something. But this guy received a message uh, from DMT in doing the Wim Hof method, and that is when you're on the exhale portion of the exercise and you're holding your breath. Sometimes you want to exhale really quick. You're like, you know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds in. You're like, okay, I've barely been inhaling. And he said to roll your eyes back as high as you can Mm -hmm. and like look up. And that will help you hold your breath longer for some reason. It like uh, tricks the nervous system into thinking that you you know just like it's not so bad because we typically will try to take a breath way before we actually have to and Mm. i think holding the breath longer increases the carbon dioxide levels in the blood which dilate your veins and it it's really relaxing also it can (laughs) be so but you you know you ultimately have to breathe and you know wim hof even says in the app you know don't Try to be a hero, you know. Don't if your body's telling you to breathe, go ahead and breathe. But this is just a way to prolong that step mm. a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. And I tried it and it worked. So it wow, like, I'll have yeah. to try it. I've noticed that, um, you know, they call that the uh, I think they call it the drist- dristi, huh. which is your focal point during meditation. And they in in yoga. Um, probably mostly kundalini yoga they tell you to do that like look up with your eyes um to more or less the the point where your third eye would be yeah um, in your light body which is in the middle of your forehead um and it does something absolutely i mean every little action you do does something um it's crazy it's just about how well can you perceive the subtle energies and we're not really in you know the modern world very good at um perceiving subtle energies but it takes a lot of practice um but certainly in altered states there it's much more um observable you know so that's why they have like different mudras on your hands you know you can put certain fingers together and they say each finger placement does a different thing and Mm -hmm. it's like you know, in, in sober waking reality, you're kind of like, what? Like, I don't feel anything when I do this. But in altered states of consciousness, if you switch from your thumb and your index finger touching to your thumb and your pinky finger touching, you can feel something different. You can feel it's like mm-hmm. a very subtle change, but it starts a different um, energetic flow through the battery that is our body and our nervous system. Yeah, our energy system. Mm -hmm. And just to circle back slightly on the shifting your eyes towards your third eye, when I was doing my um, hypnotism uh, lessons or whatever, when I I was having problems sleeping, sleeping way better, now people praise the Lord. And and I don't know that it was from 
you know, the, the hypnotism because, but it did get better when I was getting hypnotized and then I stopped doing it because it's like 80 bucks a session, mm -hmm. which I think I might go back actually, but maybe because now I'm sleeping better. But anyways, part of the pre workout or pre, you know, when she's leading you through the, to get into this hypnotic state, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is she's like, you know, look up and your eyes start like twitching, you know, you're like, yes. Yeah. That, it's a weird feeling. It's kind of yeah. like, you don't really love the way it feels, but no. it does have effects. Yeah. And then when you release it, it's a, there's like a relaxed state that occurs because you're kind of straining your eyes to look up and then you release and, and then it's easier than to slip into these deeper states. It would seem based on my experience with uh, my hypnotist. So yeah. Well, what is it like when you actually fall into the hypno, like the hypnosis? What is it? It's what is the it, most what changes. Just you're just in the most relaxed, comfortable, safe state. You feel like okay, I'm in the room with this person. I feel safe with her leading me. Nobody's going to come in here and start swinging a sledgehammer. I don't and why would you ever think that? I don't know, but for whatever reason it's sometimes it's hard to really let go. Right. You might hear a sound, whatever, if you're by yourself, but she's sitting there it's really just like guided meditation. Yeah. But my point is it's so relaxing. The most relaxing deepest I've ever I'm ever, I've ever gotten into a meditation is through hypnotism mm. which again is just like the deepest form of meditation you can do having someone help you get there mm -hmm. is uh, yeah beneficial. it's two beings worth of intention you know yeah. like one person's intention already is a ton like it's a ton of energy towards a dedicated goal but when there's two people that uh -huh. are going to hold intention for you to go in yeah it, it's that container is is very powerful that's why it's been known for thousands of years that um, he, like that's what healers are, you know, mm. it's funny. Cause like, I don't, you know, I know there's a ton of views on what goes on with healing and miracles and these types of things, but it, instead of like this guy healing you with some magical power, um, coming through his hands or something, you hear about these people who have like these magic hands, if they touch you, you'll be healed, this type of thing. I think that what they do is they show up and allow your body to do what it can do on its own, mm -hmm. you know, but it takes belief for it to do that thing. And the belief in this other person's ability to heal you adds to your belief that you can be healed. Yeah. And then maybe you get healed, you know, like maybe that's wow. what the miracle is. Yeah. The faith that this person has, whatever they say they have, and I'm just going to go along with it. Like I'm going to trust that. Yeah. You, they do. Um, what is that practice? Reiki. That, Reiki. And okay. All right. And, but you know, we've done it and I did it. And when I was having that practiced upon me, I felt strings being yeah. like moved around as if I had like strings in my chest. And right. I remember crying, which I, mm -hmm. it's not that abnormal. I cry <laughs> in almost every podcast and uh, sad commercials or touching things, but like right. touching commercials, but like, uh, it was an impact that mm -hmm. I felt. And so when, you know, yeah. I, whether, well, I don't, is it real? It seemed real enough. Well, those things, you know, Reiki and being healed and these types of things are a, participor a participatory exercise. If you show up and don't participate, you know, and mm -hmm. you just like lay there like, oh, I hope they heal me. Like, I don't really think it's going to work. And you don't participate in the act of what the ritual slash mm -hmm. ceremony of what is intended to happen is. You're not going to receive any, the effect. But if you do participate and you do try to tune into your subtle energies as they do, again, those two beings worth of intention, you and then that person, um, activate things that the body knows how to do and has known how to do for, you know, thousands of years, which is heal itself. It's crazy because I've heard, and I can't attest because I haven't done this, but in a certain way, you can heal any disease within one month. 
if you were to not get in the body's way of doing its healing. Mm. And that means more or less living like a monk for 30 days. But if you were to live like a monk for 30 days and not eat anything bad, no fast food, no all these high salts, high sugars, alcohol, all these things, like, and you go on this like diet to pretty much, um, and you don't put any toxins in your body, which is, this is really tough to do. And you're probably not even ingesting outside media either. But uh, in one month, you can probably uh, get rid of a disease um, that, you know, plagues you. And I guess it, there's varying degrees to that. Some diseases might be trickier. Maybe they take longer. But the typical kind of like depression, anxiety, mental diseases at least can, can really be treated in this way. And then some people even have like reduction of tumors and these types of things from what I've heard. If they yeah, just what go I, on a certain I diet. saw like what are those like scans of a woman who had cancer and uh, this was on a movie called the secret but Mm -hmm. she had cancer she went home she but she was watching like a lot of funny shows is what this show said and and just laughing a lot you know so she wasn't watching the Mm -hmm. news or anything that would be stressful there was no stress she didn't you know so the key here was just to laugh as much as possible which Laughter is medicine, you know, and yep. um, no stress. Eat right, and then adding all those other things, you know, the proper diet, maybe a little bit of exercise, maybe not too much, but something, mm-hmm. you know, maybe throw some sauna in there. I've 100%. been sauna in uh, more since mm-hmm. since I got back from Texas, just because. That's great. Right. I heard a yeah, I heard a podcast something to do with it just improves your body's ability to function and Mm -hmm. being up at this high altitude sometimes it's um easier to get a short short of breath yeah you know we go on hikes or whatever and i found so so, you know since i've been doing it which has only been like a week since i've been back but it has some immediate effects so i'm Mm -hmm. just gonna keep you know even just 20 minutes a day i don't even have to get like absurdly sweaty but i know you're supposed to sweat but we have this infrared sauna you know and Mm -hmm. there's other benefits other than sweating it engages yeah like your body in its totality which is something that we don't um have done a lot in the modern working middle class america life you know we don't fully engage the entirety of our body in an exercise that's why things like ice bath and sauna which both do that um are so powerful for you know activating dormant parts of you you know even mentally even just like your energy level goes up through the roof after these things because you probably get a flood of endorphins and you know i'm not uh, super versed in what all those things would be, but I know how I feel after I do those things, and I feel amazing. You know, you feel yeah. better than than what even smoking a joint can offer. You, it's like a natural high that is tingling through your whole body. You know what I mean? So, really recommend sauna and ice bath when you can. I actually recently got um, this inflatable ice bath which is dope it could fit four people in but it has quite a setup time because you got to inflate it Mm. you got to roll it out and then when you're done you got to deflate it and it takes you know a while so um i want to use that one for kind of group events because it's really pro and nice but i feel like i want to go get another uh 50 gallon from lowe's that are only like 30 bucks because that one was is just you wheel it out fill it up drain it put it back it's it's Mm -hmm. really quick and I think that will help me take more ice baths on a more regular basis again. Because definitely during the winter, I got away mm-hmm. from the practice because it was already freezing out there. Yeah. Um, you know, me there's the, the, it makes it way easier in San Antonio when it's hot out and you want to yeah. get in the ice because it's yeah. hot, you know. That's and then funny. when you get out, you get dried a little quicker and this type of thing instead of just like, okay, I, I stepped out of freezing ice into the freezing wind. And now it's like really hard um which i'm sure wim hoff would say is better for you but um you know as an still a beginner to the the practices um i think that summer springtime is way better to, to start your ice baths um if it's new to you and kind of more advanced practitioners can go out in the cold and do it even in the cold you know what i mean this 
podcast is brought to you in part by ohanakavabar.com. Now, Ohana means family, but what is kava? Kava is a root from the South Pacific. It makes you calm and happy. Just go to ohanakavabar.com. Choose your favorite brew. They have many to choose from with more on the way. And I personally like the tincture. It tastes good. It gets you quick and you're calm and relaxed in a moment. It cools and calms the nerves. Some call it an herbal Xanax. I think it's quite fine. And I think you'll like it. Let them know we sent you. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors and support this company. It's run by a fine gentleman who worked in the nursing um, profession for 15 years before he finally was able to break away from the chains of you know, the nine to five and start his own company. He takes pride. He loves it. He drinks it every day. I love it. I use it all the time. And I think you will too. So go to ohanakavabar.com. Use promo code sheath. You're going to love it. It doesn't taste that great, but chase it with a nice pineapple. You will not be disappointed. Trust me on that. Ohanakavabar.com. Ohana's family. Use promo code sheath. You're welcome. Our next ad is for another plant medicine, if you will. It's called Kratom. And you can get it at Soap Corner. Dot com s o a p corner with a k dot com go to soap corner dot com use promo code sheath and of course last but not least sheath underwear dot com the greatest underwear on the planet the underwear of legends the underwear that keeps your balls from sticking to your legs that's right this is the best underwear because it keeps your boys cool check out she's underwear.com back to the show yeah i watch people like in the snow getting into like a lake that has mm-hmm. ice cut out so that they can get in for a minute and i'm like you can take that that's crazy with you i'm and, and like you said I, I took a break over the winter but as of this week i've done ice showers mm-hmm. like ice showers you know cold showers i did do a cold shower yesterday yeah. And but that was the first one in a while. In Same, probably some yeah. weeks for sure. Um I just felt like I needed that boost. But it does do it. It's crazy how it like sends your body into these funny motions, you know. Like uh-huh. when you first get under the cold and when my back touches, my back is the hardest part. Mm-hmm. For some people, their head is the hardest part. The head is easy for me. Yeah, the head is easy for me too. Yeah, just dunk back. it under and I'm good. But when it hits my back, I'm like, Whoa, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. It stimulates those nerve endings or something back yeah, there. Totally. And it wakes you up. It's definitely a stimulant. And, dude, I watched this YouTube video last night. It was the biggest house in the urban world. It was a 105,000 square feet house, mm. which is like 30 times my house's size. Wow. And it's in L.A. And... It took like two half hour episodes to walk through most of it, but they had a dunking a one you know one of the areas had like a sauna, a dry sauna, cold sauna, showers, and a pool and a whatever. But then they had a dunking pool, and I, I remember um, Tim Timothy Tim Tony Robbins Tony mm-hmm. Robbins the motivational speaker. Yep. Every morning, according to him, he just he dunks in this. Uh, cold plunge Mm -hmm. and it's just ready you know you just go and just like you jump in there and i guess you stay in there for as long i get when you and when you're you know a millionaire you can have that just set up you don't have to wheel it out in the backyard and Mm -hmm. whatever totally yeah it makes me think when you get a house that big you kind of need like a management team just for like general upkeep in your house you know like maybe it could be a maid but i almost feel like you need Staff. Three people, yeah. yeah like there a was staff. a nine nine room staff house, and then a four room guest house, and mm-hmm. seven pools, and it was absurd. It was so crazy. Isn't it funny though? Like I feel it's weird. I don't quite understand the idea because 
a staff in your house. Yeah. Literally, you have to trust them with everything. Yeah. You're, they're in your house. And I almost wonder, what what is it, you know, what is that path like when you become the staff guy to like a millionaire? How did you get there? You know right. what I mean? And where are you in your path to your right. future? You know, Right, because you just show just up to this guy's in. mansion every day. You go back to your probably kind of like smaller, normal-ish house, but you, every day, all day, you're like, going to this mansion standing around like waiting to do a thing or i saw a movie recently where they have like a guy that literally just washes the cars all day oh my god he just shows up and he just washes the cars there's 10 cars he washes all of them and he probably starts over it's like (laughs) Uh, yeah that's absurd that's what i have uh, well my roomba is to clean the floor i love that Mm -hmm. and we need more robots but then what are the, what's that guy going to do? Mm-hmm. He's going to have to get... Robots some... are crazy. But um, you actually just brought up uh, Tony Robbins. And on the way home recently, I was on a trip. I was doing certain research into um, a certain psychedelic medicine. And Tony Robbins came up in it. And he did it as well. Um, oh, he did the toad. He did five okay. meo DMT. Tony Robbins, like mm. the the motivational speaker of our of our era, which is awesome. Um, what did he say about it? He you- well, well, what's awesome is that it was almost just something he did so that he could help people in a different field because mm. without that experience, he can't quite relate to certain people and what they're dealing with so in my understanding of well what i took away from what he was saying was i did this so that i could help everybody even the people in that you know category people that are you know going through these spiritual experiences through using psychedelic medicines he he couldn't really uh feel confident in helping a person like that because he hadn't himself done it and I think that is commendable, honestly, because, um, again, you know, like this is uh, something I heard um, someone else say, but the the saying goes like, to to be in the field of psychology and never try these medicines that open you up to different parts of your mind would be like being a botanist and never have planted a tree. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I study trees, but I don't plant them. Yeah. Um, I only do flowers. Yeah. So for that reason, Tony went into that and uh, had a mind-blowing time. It, it's quite crazy. It was actually on Mike Tyson's podcast. No way. So if you look up Mike Tyson and Tony Robbins on YouTube, you'll wow. find it. Wow. He's having some um, good guests. I haven't ever listened to it because mm-hmm. because I'm just like, it's Mike Tyson. How 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 like great he's of changed. could he be? <laughs> he is changed. Okay. And it's crazy because uh, his change came about through this toad medicine as well. He absolutely died and wow. came back. Okay. And he was uh, a different person, more or less. It was he could see the error of his ways for the his whole career. And uh, he went on a bunch of podcasts talking about his experience, um, including impulsive um which he actually ate four grams of mushrooms live on the podcast which was freaking hilarious wow um and and it was funny because he was like chewing the mushrooms and still talking on the podcast uh, and they were like can we get him some water can we get him some uh, water? And, and he was like nah i'm not done eating them yet <laughs> you oh know my God. it was so funny but so like one of the impulsive guests asked you know why would one do that and then Mike Tyson looks at him and is like, do you want to be the same person forever? Do you want to change? Do you want to move beyond wow. to the next part of your life? He's like, that's what the toad did for me. And then he goes into like all the things th- that he regrets about the ways he was before. And it was crazy. He's very like open and um, on a different uh, level of authenticity for sure and it's very wow. inspiring and then uh, tony robbins did the same thing and they both talk about it on that podcast they talk about their respective experiences with this toad medicine it's crazy 
that's that's good to hear, you know, because we're you know we're doing these things, and to see other super successful people mm-hmm. taking these medicines um, mm-hmm. and getting benefit from it and sharing it with the world, ultimately, that's you know we'll all we can all be successful in our own mind health healthy mind uh perspective probably it, you know he was rich but was he successful he was like abusing everything and he was he was like out of his mind yeah he was two, using cocaine a lot he, he said too, yeah yeah which we you know we know is an ego booster not an ego softener it makes you more full of yourself more believing that you are the shit and you know, you know best and blah 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 these other medicines do the opposite they say are you the shit do you know everything i get so you here's, probably don't know very much and then you're like oh shit. right yeah that's better <laughs> they're more humbling whereas right. these other medicine like cocaine but well, you you know isn't mm-hmm. necessarily medicine but what i had to take again recently every time i have the mouth surgery i get prescribed these narcotics and every time i take them I get way more judgmental. I get more like in my head thinking negatively about people around me. Like, and they're, I, I, it's just, I get more irritable and right. it's annoying. And I'm, you know, as a awakened type of a being who can sense my own mind getting away <laughs> from, you know, where I want it to be. Uh, which is in like this loving and compassionate state where it's more like Mm -hmm. irritated and ego driven. Um, You know, it's like, okay, I only have 12 of these pills. I just have to get through the next few days. And, and I have Kratom shout out to soap corner.com S O A P K O R N E R.com promo code. Sheath will save you like 10% on your Kratom. But so that, and I hate to do that, but, it's honestly what I do. I've had to do this a few times to mm-hmm. transition smoothly off of these narcotics. Is it's called a, a plant? What do we call it? A plant uh, opioid? Yeah, but it's like a it's like a plant based opioid or something right. like that, if you will. And anyways, yeah. And then I, I transition to that, and then slowly transition off of that back to just normalcy, which it's only like a week or two process, and it just keeps me from feeling also when you come off of these pain pills every little ache and pain is magnified right you know so it, it, then you're more irritable and whatnot but point is i do i mean i was just kind of like when you're anyone out there when you're on these pain pills it does in like uh strengthen your ego for some reason and it's mm-hmm. not ego dissolving you know it's the opposite right. and I don't like it personally, you know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly like that feeling either. I prefer to be more in the unknown, the mystery, the wonder of what this life is. And also, you know, it's not like I'm a always this way, but sometimes we have to learn to not take things so seriously. There is a time to take things seriously. Absolutely. But there's also a time when you don't have to get upset over a thing. You don't have to. Sometimes those things work themselves out. Um, and that's that's a tough thing to, to deal with because it's, uh, uh, it's accepting the control that we don't have. You know, like that's what stoicism is about. Stoicism is about there's things in your control and there's things out of your control. Um, for the things in your control you can you know work with those things and and do them but the things out of your control like getting caught in traffic why get upset it's not in your control you know to sit there and get upset about it this is no there's no reason to you know and that's why i do resonate with the uh the philosophy of stoicism um i've definitely listened to a bunch of books and i have a uh an actual physical book called uh on the shortness of life by seneca and it's true life is so short why are we going to get upset about little things and you know we're not always going to be able to catch ourselves but the more you practice the better you get at it and um breath which is a big reason why yoga teaches breath work pranayama and as well um wim hof is blowing up right now is 
the breath can help you come back to your ability to um, be conscious and not just go with that. Um, what's it called? You know, like that instinct uh, or something. Yeah, that fe- that easy automatic feeling of getting upset. Like it's easy to get upset. It's not easy to take ten breaths, but if you do take the ten breaths, you're very likely to not be upset anymore because you can uh, say, "Okay, I'm here now. Let me reset my pattern of thought instead of like getting caught on that um, hamster wheel." You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah, I, know. I mean it happens too often. And like, let's say for instance, you're in a relationship, and you know something about that other person's past comes up that's irritating to you and you're like okay what am i the fuck what am i supposed to do about it i can go down this weird mental rabbit hole of mm-hmm. how it's some kind of an assault on me <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> but i and it and i so it's, it happens when I'm on these pills and I've been on the pills for like three, the last three days or since Tuesday mm-hmm. and it's Saturday. So I'm almost off of them. I'm just like titrating off of them. But anyways, I start noticing these things and, but I'm like, okay, I mean, no, like, I mean, like this is my mind fixating on something that I don't have control over. That's in the past. We've, I've already gotten through this. I'm already over this, mm-hmm. but it comes up again and I'm like, ugh. Like we're already done with this, but dude, mm-hmm. don't fucking do it again, because you, it's so easy to just let your mind go down this negative train of thought that mm-hmm. is just gonna upset you. Why? I don't get. I don't know why our own mind would do that to us mm-hmm. when, like, there's no real rationale. There's no rational. Right. Um, it's crazy because yeah, I, I don't. Reason. I don't fully understand this this concept yet, but it's something I keep hearing more and more about, which is it's unresolved trauma. So we are pretty doing well. We're pretty healthy. All this and that. It's like we don't have trauma. Like we're we're fine. Like look at all the stuff we're doing, and we seem to be so happy. And like these things, it's like we can't possibly have trauma, but apparently everyone does and things that you don't even remember you know and so there's you know when we get upset about a thing someone does it's not that they're doing it it's that we have a deep-seated trauma we're not even aware of um we don't even remember how we got it or why um that it's it's hitting and then we're like this doesn't feel good this this upsets me like you know i don't feel great right now and it's weird because like we think that it's something that just happened like in the now, but yep. it's actually activating something that's stored in our body already from a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> so to get rid of these traumas, you know, there's of course therapy and <clears throat> yoga does a great job of moving the energy through the body and releasing them because it's said that these traumas actually live in our body and our muscles. And a lot of times when we have a, <clears throat> a chronic pain, those are the areas that the trauma is being stored. Um, so, but there are medicines that apparently help get those out and they're on the rise, you know, especially in these little like hippie spots like Denver and Austin. And what about ecstatic dance? That's a, that's a great one. That's a great one. But the medicine I was going to talk about was combo, which I've not done. Um, Um, but, but it's that frog medicine. It's a different frog medicine. uh, So one's a toad and one's a frog. uh, Um, but apparently combo sends all these like peptides to your body because it thinks it's dying. It thinks it's been poisoned and it goes to all these different areas and um, helps to move the energy through them and out of them and does a lot of stuff for your nervous system. It's anti-inflammatory and all these things. And people that use it seem to be really healthy and really on point. And really the most interesting part for me is that apparently it increases your sight and hearing as well, at least for that day, if not a few days afterwards, your sight and hearing are like way enhanced. Uh Um, When that's the most interesting part about doing it for me, the least interesting part is you have to throw up for 15 minutes. You know, I'm Mm -hmm. not really interested in that. That Mm -hmm. sucks. Like Mm -hmm. I don't want to sign up for that. And that's why I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. But I might, I might try it. Who knows? You know, like if, if it shows up and it's the right time and I'm in the right place, 
I'm, I'd be interested to see if the sight and hearing thing is real, um, as well as if my body just feels better and stronger after, because that's what they kind of say. They say it's a warrior medicine, um, and it was also uh, known to be used by the hunters of tribes. So they would have to go hunt these pigs and like these crazy fast things out in the jungle. And before they, they would go hunt, they would do this combo medicine so that they can see and hear better to be, to have an edge on the animals. Um, so they call it a warrior medicine or a mm-hmm. hunter medicine. It's crazy. Stuff. That reminds me of like, I think Aubrey Marcus. They've done it. Yeah. He, well, he, cause like, but there's sometimes like some people like him in this instance do these psychedelics too much and you know you do it and then you but you were already scheduled to do psychedelics next weekend but you're good <laughs> and now you got to go you're already i'm good because usually you're after you do a, a good dose or whatever it's you you're good for a while at least a month or something right mm-hmm. usually and if you have to go do some when you're already um like you're good it's mm-hmm. i feel i remember just watching this documentary where he was already good and he had to go do more and he was it was not it didn't seem like a fun time but mm-hmm. that's neither here nor there i guess ultimately just for those yeah. out there don't yeah. do it all too much yeah i think there is a respectable amount to do and i'm not sure how much and or, or how frequently how he often, does it i know it yeah. feels like a yearly thing at least um where we see him on social media talking about i'm going to you know dance with ayahuasca again which is always interesting but it's crazy because it's just about the path you're on everyone's on a different path for some people they might need it once for some people they might need it every weekend i don't well it's like he i think he was doing it for someone else at that this particular instance i'm thinking of and just to refer back to what you said earlier if i'm in the right state and the right time i might do it Mm -hmm. like it is there's a timing and you know calling and you you know you should be like okay i'm ready and it's a personal thing that everyone has to ask themselves and not, but sometimes, you know, that's when it can be bad is when you're like pressured into doing it when you're not ready, I think, or Mm -hmm. something along those lines, just throwing that out there. Devil's avocado. Devil's avocado. No, I agree. I think there should be moderation and respect with these medicines. And what's interesting is that they'll tell you that themselves. Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. If you go back too soon, they'll be like, why are you Mm -hmm. back, bitch? Mm-hmm. we told you don't come back to you did this other thing <laughs> really like the 100 percent, because that happened to me with like the dmt um mm-hmm. it was like we're good you don't need to come back here we mm-hmm. got this under control right and i and then and then so the next night i, I mean because i was going to do it again the next night because i had more and i was just like mm-hmm. i flushed it down the toilet it was i was like it told me not to come back what the right. fuck do you want me to do i'm not gonna disobey this Right. powerful entity and that's the respect you know and yeah. that's what it takes and the people that can't respect these plants will have a bad time with them and that's why they're not uh they're not interested and they think the people that do them are crazy because they're like how could you do that like because when i did it i had a hell experience when it's like well did you respect the thing did you do your research did you have set and setting did you you know like because if you don't they're gonna say bro you didn't have no respect for me you came here completely unprepared so i'm going to show you the power <laughs> and um, that power is immense you know what yeah I mean? good point mm-hmm. but you okay so you had an experience recently that i think you were probably ready for and you were kind of excited to tell me about on yeah. the phone the other day but we decided to hold it off for this so right maybe this would be a good segue into that it would it would it's definitely been one that i keep hearing more and more about it's what tony robbins and Mike Tyson had tried, which is the toad medicine, not the frog, but the toad, uh, 5-MeO DMT. And while there's DMT in the name, it's not like normal DMT, the ones Mm. that we think of as the spirit molecule. Mm. Um, It's, uh, you know, it's from a, it's from a frog. Um, They harvest it. It's more or less a poison as well that I guess like if it gets attacked, it'll like spit it out from its back and like hit a snake in the eye or whatever. Uh And the snake will go flying away or, you know, whatever it is. Um, But Hamilton Morris has a great documentary called Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. And he's done two episodes on this particular medicine. And it, uh, 
it's crazy to think that who who would try that? Who would get the poison from a toad and smoke it and try it and learn what it does? Like that wow. is crazy. Wow. But uh, after he did, he had a life changing experience. He started. Um, his name is Albert Most. That's his, at least his pseudo name, like what people know him by, which is the first guy to discover the toad medicine. Wow. He made these pamphlets um, and he gave them out and slowly but surely word got around that, you know, this is how you milk these toads. This is how you smoke it. This is what happens. And it is a merging into oneness, into God. Um, and it, and in a different way than normal DMT, because normal DMT is a visual um, experience. You see colors and geometries and closed eye visuals, and you go to some internal space that has a visual dimension to it. Um, this other medicine, 5-MeO, uh, is not very visual. Um, it's mostly a dissolution of your ego um, more or less an ego death where you kind of merge into the field of oneness that exists just beyond uh, our normal consciousness. And for me, my kind of trip report is I took it, I held it, it hit really quick, it hit in like five seconds, and then... Um, there was this overwhelming whoa and i kept saying whoa like visually <laughs> out loud like for five minutes i could whoa whoa, whoa oh my god <laughs> whoa you know like that more or less for five minutes straight and and i'm on the back i'm on my back and i'm definitely like kind of like my hands are um, grabbing and looking and searching for stuff. And I found like this blanket I was laying on. So I grabbed the blanket and I'm just holding it and I'm kind of like stretching the fabrics of the blanket and stuff. And it, and it feels like an energetic surge pulsing through your body. It's literally almost like Kundalini awakening. And um, the effects are crazy because time and space kind of go away and, for me, I guess since it wasn't visual, my eyes were closed. It was black. So that was just black um, with very like faint, um, possibly faint geometry, but and not very um, visual. Now, there's a higher dose you can take of this where apparently people go into a white light. Um, I did not get that experience, but I did get the experience of um, being reset, re like defragged my consciousness was like they they flipped the switch off and then back on and it was wow. like okay here now you're back i felt like the same person i felt like i was in the same place and i didn't notice the effects immediately but it wasn't until like the next day because this was done late at night and then we went to sleep it was like the next day when i woke up i was like in a very interesting awakened state where I wasn't in my normal habitual thought patterns or my normal habitual just like things that I do. Like we have these rituals when we get up. This is what get the we want to do. And yeah, like water. those things were yeah. gone. And it was like, huh. And, it, and, it, and like the like automatic, let me check my phone. Let me check my messages. Let me check my email. All of those like automatic things we do were just out of my head. And I was like, huh. Well, I could choose to do that, but... You know, um, it's interesting because it was much more awareness, so much more awareness of my thoughts and my being and my the world I'm in and the place I'm at and these things. And it was literally just like a resetting of the hard drive, you know, <laughs> mm. it was it was intense. And it, I think it's probably not for everyone it takes a lot of courage and you've got to be willing to work with integration so that you understand you know what to pull from that which more or less is there is a reset button that exists on earth like this actually is one of the most powerful medicines for getting people off the hardest drugs to get off of like heroin and meth and stuff mm -hmm. um, they go do 5-MeO and something's changed in 15 minutes they don't want to do it 
that they, they, they're they're done. Like there's no, oh, I'm gonna like start easing off of it and this type of shit. They're just like, I have no interest in that anymore because I can be aware of who I am now. You're not in these thought loops anymore. Thought loops. And, yeah. and it definitely probably has a temporary effect, you know, as we've discussed on the podcast before. There's some weeks where you're feeling really clear and you can fall back into your patterns. Um, but you know, as far as like tools available to get mm. you out of a rut or to get you out of an addiction or to get you out of uh, some self-destructive behavior, this is the top, this is the top medicine probably you could use. The only one that I think would compare is Ibogaine, which mm -hmm. I have not done. Um, and I've heard, I heard some weird report and I don't recall the data about Ibogaine, but this sounds better, I guess, ultimately. It sounds like a lot less time. Yeah, I'm right. 15 minutes instead of a day or two. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to trip for a day and be in pain. And, and I've heard you can't sleep or something and it's not fun. Whereas this sounds like you said, and I could totally identify with that. I'm like seeing a switch and, or, you know, a circuit breaker just flip off and flip back on and right. get that reset. Which yeah, it's almost be. like a death. It's like yeah. an ego death. And it's not a bodily death because your body's fine, which is the crazy part. But what is your mind uh, dissipates and goes in every direction. And, you know, it's, you can't really describe it with language because it's beyond language. But you could just say you're out of your body and you've become one with the unified field of consciousness that is the entire cosmos, more or less. Like that's the feeling you get. Um and then you start slowly inching back, inching back, inching back, and then you open your eyes and you're in a room and you're like, whoa, I remember being here. Like, what happened? Where did I go? It's almost gone as soon as you're back. You can barely describe it. Like most people, if you go listen to the trip reports, they're like, I saw a white light and then my life was changed. And it's like, it's so <laughs> subtle. It's so subtle. Like they can't really give you more of an explanation than that. But it's very true. It's changing people's lives. It's crazy. Wow. Well, wow. That that's now I'm saying it. Wow. I wanna so it sounds like something I would be down to give it give a go, but uh I don't have any in my pocket at the moment. <laughs> so maybe if the universe finds uh its way if it, if it finds its way here right. one day. Uh, that would be something pretty cool, I think, because, because otherwise you have the regular old mushrooms, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm loving. I hated the the penis envy ones. Yeah, I just I th changed the name, but then <laughs> um, I I fell in love with it because it's I get that reset. And the last time, and we don't have to talk. Well, anyways, last time I did it though, I was cr there was so much crying mm -hmm. that. It was cathartic. It was yeah. like I felt, and I always feel like a reset after that. But the habitual actions that I take normally, I've had it where, you know, in the past where I took mushrooms and then, and I quit smoking cigarettes, you know, and, and it's like, of course, you quit smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes. Um, mm -hmm. But then you eventually go back to it or whatever. And I've since quit smoking cigarettes. Of course, I have this electronic one, but. Now, as you were saying what you said, I was like, oh, well, that would be pretty cool to just yeah. reset all your bad habits potentially, which are probably yeah. going to come back. But it, hey, you have this right. tool to get it, uh, you right. know, take a break or whatever. And, and maybe you just have about some willpower, you weak mm -hmm. bitch. But well, here's I want to <laughs> say this. And the reason I said I don't know if I recommend it, which is the crazy part, is when you're not attached to the things. For for the for the days after this has only been a week for me. It's about a week ago I did it, so um, I'm not like super far into the integration process. But I'll say there is some type of weird thing going on when uh, the things you're so used to doing, um, like you know checking and scrolling through social media or any like these rituals that you have, like for example, someone who stopped smoking. Well, now, what do you do with that time mm -hmm. um, that you would otherwise had spent two, three hours a day smoking? Because, you know, that's your ritual. You go out to the back porch, it's 15 minutes a cigarette, you have five of them, whatever that equals at the end of the day. You now have that time. And there is this kind of like 
uh, uncomfortable uh, feeling of like, whoa, I need to like step into doing new things then to replace those those old things because otherwise you're just kind of sitting around like, huh, like I feel just different and I don't <laughs> want to do the things that I used to want to do. You know, like for me, a lot of it has been like this, you know, because we do social media for our business. So we post like that's outgoing. I think posting is great. It's consuming mm-hmm. endlessly. That yeah. is not really good for us. No. And it's something that I do catch myself doing where I'm like, oh, I've been scrolling for 15 minutes. You know, you feel like you're honestly being productive. It's really that- switch. It changes. So anyway, so uh, so when I'm not doing that now, I have this now this time and it's like whoa it's almost overwhelming to have the time to do these other things you have to do that you know are really hard um like these these company things these big ideas like Mm -hmm. these big missions we have it's like oh now the pressure's on to do it now the pressure's on you can't numb yourself away with this like social media scrolling shit and um it really just reset the way that i think of that and i'd also inspired me to try what is called dopamine fasting okay um which is you take a certain amount of time per day for a week or two or a month or however long you want to do it to do nothing to do nothing it's almost like meditation yeah um so that the things that used to excite you and get you flowing and and like um pumped up and energized can return to you in that same level of passion it's and it's because for me, I think it's a lot about listening because I listen to a lot of things, audiobooks, podcasts, music. These things keep my dopamine like up, up, mm-hmm. up. Like I'm constantly learning. I'm engaged. I'm entertained. So when I've stopped doing that for the past week, stop hearing so much, all the consuming has see has that's died what I down. That's where you my know? consumption is the most, and mm-hmm. it's listening to podcasts. Right, and I I take it as a positive, like you said, I, I feel yeah. like I'm being productive. I'm learning yeah. about. And in a way it, it is a more productive thing you can do than watch like SpongeBob SquarePants or whatever, you know, but, like well, we're learning. But yeah. when you don't have all that going on now, it's you're quiet. like, A, I'm missing it, but I know it. I should do this. I should not, you know, I, it's like, I want to, I want to do it, but that's like the addiction to it. That's crazy. It's like, I want to hear podcasts. I want to, I want to hear music. Um, but to not do it, it allows your brain's dopamine levels to start evening out so that, you know, we can be engaged in a activity in person and not have that thing come on where we need to check our phone in the middle of conversation or these types of things, you know. And so, like, that's dopamine, de- uh, the, the dopamine um, detox. Fast, fast. Or, or fast, yeah, the yeah. dopamine fast, um, which is, you know, intentionally not being entertained huh. <laughs> like being literally bored as shit like but what if you're going to... for a hike well that's a no good you know i think that that's phone. a great um middle way you know yeah. i think that that is still going to engage your dopamine but way healthier you yeah know? so uh, i think a camping trip would be a great way to start that but actually on the deepest level which like a dopamine detox even says um, or dopamine fast even says do not engage in conversations Mm. because even conversations um, are inward entertaining and Mm. they stimulate us in that way. So um, you can go on a hike, but you probably want to be alone or you just don't want to talk during it. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like a nice, because I'm probably going to go on a hike here soon. And, uh yeah i get i get dopamine from listening to podcasts sometimes Mm -hmm. i really i don't know what i love about it i i like love it sometimes i'm like this is fucking awesome i'm listening to this podcast and this is amazing and like this conversation we just having learning because you you know i like to learn shit and maybe learning produces dopamine Mm -hmm. and um and learning about this new toad Mm-hmm. medicine very cool yeah i recommend watching the hamilton's pharmacopoeia about it or or even just things on youtube if you type in bufo bf b-u-f-o or um five meo it'll come up and 
yeah, you'll see the crazy experiences people are having. Um, I think that there's a step higher that I will maybe try at some point. But what's funny is when I came back from that, I wasn't even like, I want to do it again. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Like, I'm going to sit with that for a while. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so, but yeah, it definitely um, re- like hit that reset button where I can look at the things that mentally stimulate me all day um, and want to reset those dopamine levels so that I get maximum engagement out of normal life and not have to be searching through the phone to feel normal you know what i mean and that's the big takeaway i that i got from it um because i think the phone is probably one of the biggest vices it's also one of the most helpful tools but it's the one that you could be sitting right next to your friend you've you've taken the time to drive to each other's house or wherever (laughs) come out and like you're just looking at the phone not talking to the guy right there. Like what the message was, was this is divine. This uh, life. Like, like talking to your friend is the most important thing. You know, being present with the real world, more or less, is the most important thing. Because this digital world, it has a thing to it. It's good for business, but it's an illusion. <laughs> it's a distraction. And like every morning I check the numbers. I gotta check Sheath, I check the bank, I check my cryptos, buy Doge right. buy Dogecoin. <laughs> right. I'm telling you. And I I'm, think it's fine to be able to check for an hour, you know, but it's when we're on the phone for four and eight and shit. You know, oh, four yeah. and four and eight hours a day, that is not normal. That's not good. Because I do remember the time when the only time you looked at the phone was when it rang. <laughs> yeah, and people, like, when you're what, looking at social media, looking at someone else's life, and, right. like, going in a wormhole of an old friend or whatever, you're just like, what are you... Maybe it's, you know, every now and then, but don't do it every day. And, you know, our brother, Will, when we had the meeting the other day on Zoom, the right. family meeting, uh, he was like, does anyone still get on Facebook? Because I still, I just stay on Facebook. And I know Stacy stays, my wife stays on Facebook right. also. And so a lot of people are still on Facebook and just scrolling endlessly. Like when I get on Instagram, I'm checking for sheath logos so I can, re, you right. know, repost, share, maybe comment Absolutely. or whatever. And then that's the crazy part is someone has to do that work. It is work in a certain sense. Someone has to check these messages and repost mm-hmm. and do the stuff for the brand, you know. Um, but it's it's that other mode we get into where it's like, okay, all that's done. Let me just scroll and scroll uh, and scroll. Oh, look at him. Like, oh, whatever. you know. But the, the real thing is I heard this quote that said, comparison is the thief of joy. It is. It, and it that is. is when we see someone else, oh, they're in Hawaii right now, yeah. living the life. I'm just in my bedroom grinding away. You know, yeah. it's like you feel kind of like I'm missing out. I, I need more. I'm not good enough. These things come up. And it's not that at all. It's just that this is the path you're on. And you don't need to be looking at what everyone's up to all day. It just it becomes an addiction, and they know that, and they engineer these platforms to be ultra interesting and to keep us glued to it, like a literally like rat to a freaking cocaine inside the little rat and the, mm-hmm. the little experiments they do with rats. You know, like that's us, and having the awareness of that is important um, because otherwise you justify it, and you're really good at justifying it. Because I I would always say like oh I'm networking like oh I'm I'm being productive by doing this but then after this reset is like wow okay well that I I could wipe all that away and see clearly now that there was a ton of time that was not invested well um, going through these platforms and that's definitely a big takeaway for me. Well, like the one more devil's advocate on um, the rat and cocaine experience experiment when they opened up the cage to uh, like a play park for the rat to go have fun and do like outside activities, uh, they stopped doing the cocaine. And, and right. so environment. If, if we had a more 
welcoming outside environment to go out and play and have fun you know skate parks everywhere maybe it's like cool shit like i want the tech billionaires <clears throat> to you know and myself included whatever lol but um <laughs> to invest in community outside right. of the you know these platforms and right. maybe that's coming one day hopefully but that would be a noble um direction to push society like even though you're making all the money on your platforms pushing people like go outside and play mm -hmm. you know go on a hike and i have th this national forest right by my house and, and i'm i like texted in the middle of this because as you were talking i'm like i want to go on a hike so i'm mm -hmm. getting can we're gonna go on a hike to awesome dopamine fast if you would like love to it. an extent but uh love it that's the benefit i got from this conversation right. is to get outside just now totally yeah absolutely it's funny because yeah so you have like a really big backyard um if it was kind of leveled it could be a ninja warrior obstacle course so that's pretty fun hell yeah so exactly. someday maybe <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's funny is when that was a big show i used to just say to myself i will have that one day i will have one of those in my backyard because not everyone because some of them are too hard i'm like i wouldn't want to get hurt but uh, some of them seem really cool like jumping from this box diagonally to this box diagonally to this box diagonally to this box and like kind of having your like ninja skills up um, yeah those seem fun you know well but speaking some of, of the that, other like heavy cr crazy ones that require a lot of strength i probably couldn't manage but <laughs> well maybe well so because that uh brought up the fact that we're potentially we're going to go to florida and it's do we take the team or us three go as of right now it's like a, we're going to take a small team unit but mm -hmm. if the whole team went they, there's this obstacle course i went to uh it's like this you climb up these trees but you're like locked in with um something you would be locked in if you were like climbing rocks basically and but you go through the obstacle course you're locked in so that if you fall you just be like hanging there but it's it's mm. and it's not like a ninja one but it kind of is and i know that like when when we talked about going to florida stacy was like oh we could go to this obstacle course and that would be cool but i love obstacle courses yeah i mean i'm not that good at them but i love the idea of um yeah like you know competing in a really chill way with your bros like who could get across faster because there are certain things you know for me i could never compete in like lifting certain amount of weight it's like yeah i can't do it better than this that you know you steven like a, a bunch of our friends just way better at lifting heavy things but when it comes to like agility stuff that's where i can kind of like you know I, let me have some fun here <laughs> <laughs> well i think all these good things are in our future we're gonna stay positive and keep you know growing and, and i think helping other people along the way is a way for us to continue that growth for ourselves you know if we just take it all and hoard it and don't share it then we might stagnate but as we grow we share and we grow further you know continuously Absolutely. so amen forward, looking yeah amen i'm looking forward to the future I'm very optimistic and this is fun thank you for joining me on another absolutely that was a great one fantastic episode of the robert Patton global podcast available on all platforms share it with your friends maybe i want to do i do want to you know i want to get better at this but i feel like the more i do the better i'll get and um so i'm just going to keep doing it and thank you everyone for listening thank you matt for joining me until next time be well